The following is a production of Learfield Sports. A new era of Chattanooga Mox basketball has begun with head coach Matt McCall leading the way. I could not be more excited to be the basketball coach of this great university. The biggest thing for me are these players. Yeah, I thought the students were awesome. They came out. You know, we need that every night. UTC basketball is home to 28 Southern Conference championships and 60 all-conference performers. I'm really excited about embarking on this journey with them going forward here. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Basketball, hosted by head coach Matt McCall and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. By Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. By FSG Bank, proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Basketball. I'm Jim Reynolds. A very, very busy time of the season for both the men's and women's basketball teams. Last Saturday, the UTC women's team went on the road and won their game at East Tennessee State. Big rivalry win. And the men's basketball team went to Birmingham and posted a victory over Samford. Two doubleheaders coming up. On Thursday, game one of that doubleheader, UTC women taking on Furman. Game two, the men against Wofford. Then flip-flop it for Saturday. The UTC women's team will take on Wofford in game one of that twin bill, and the men will square off against Furman. A lot coming up as far as Mox basketball is concerned. Couple of wins for the Mox this week, beating the Citadel on Monday and Samford last Saturday in Birmingham. Highlights of those games coming up on Inside Chattanooga Mox Basketball. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Kicked out of there, Mox with a steal. Robertson comes back the other way, two on one if they hurry, alley you into Esther who throws it down. It's under the floor, drives, tosses, Etheridge again, passes up the shot, drives in the lane, throws up the shot, and a blocking foul is going to be called, and that's going to be a three-point play possibility for Cunningham with the possession. Bounce pass almost stolen away, Trey McLean with a steal. Down the floor he goes, angles his way and throws it down. Another dunk for Chattanooga. Long arms of Trey McLean, 7-2, rebound long. Coming away with it, Moxwood numbers, three on one. Far side, Jonathan Burroughs cut lays it up and in. Mox had numbers, they had a three on one break. That's a lay In the lane to Toyo. Toyo on the block, extended drive, double team, butt shot up and in, nicely done. That's NBA style for Justin Toyo. Who makes it? Who tries to turn the corner out in front, drives all the way, high floating layup, no good. Follow up by Justin Toyo. An active Justin Toyo, I might add. Tips it, it, out in front, Eric Robertson, bounce pass inside Toyo. Out in front, weak side, layup up and in, and good. Esther gets the basket and the whistle. Eric Robertson gets the pass out in front, Trey McClain drives inside. Inside, Etheridge goes up and lays it up and in. Mox kind of spread the floor. He gets out of the scrub and throws it back out in front. Gets a return pass, stolen away. Outlet pass, Jonathan Burroughs Cook. He goes in for the layup and misses the dunk. Mox gets the rebound, McClain puts it up and in. Missed the dunk and then was laying there. Jonathan Burroughs Cook gives it to Trey McLean. Eric Robertson, deep three. I'm way and good. Deepest three attempt of the night. And that's biggest lead is four right now. Biggest lead has been six. Prior to Oldham. Oldham on the wing. Throws it inside Toyo. Toyo goes up, puts it up, and good. Justin Toyo's third field goal. He's got sets the screen himself. Says go this way. And then he throws it there. The box pick off the pass. Trey McLean bumped. He'll go in and lay it up and in. Trey McLean, another steal and layup. Toyo goes inside, needs some help. Back to McLean. Pump fake, drives the lane, all the way, layup good. Great move, Trey McLean. He's got eight. 
Trey McLean to Greg Pryor, near side Eric Robertson. Robertson drives hard, and it's jammed inside by Toyo. Robertson drove hard. Trey McLean on the dribble to Chuck Esther out front. Back to McLean, inside Esther, full spin, turn, fire, and hit. Chuck Esther, nice side to Pryor. Bump fake Pryor, drives in the lane, stops Oldham, three on the way, and good. D. Oldham hits Chattanooga's only second five-point Chattanooga lead. Near side, Pryor in the corner, open look, three-pointer, good again. D. Oldham back-to-back -back threes to okay. make us inside Toyo. Toyo against Walker, up and under, lays it up and in. I think Toyo started to take it personally a little bit, but Walker's having a big night. Nicely done and picked out of midair. Box with the basketball, in a hurry to Etheridge for the layup. Great feed inside by D. Oldham to Duke Etheridge. Rims it back out in front. Back inside, Etheridge. Pump fake, drives the lane over Walker. Hook shot up and in. Etheridge with a nice muscle basket that time. He scored nine. 50-40, Robertson. Robertson far side, Esther. Shot clock seven. Out in front it goes into Toyo. Toyo in on the block. Up and under, puts it up and in. Justin Toyo with a dozen. Tried to draw the charge on Toyo. Mark it down as final. Mox win their 18th game of the year. Hard fought contest. Chattanooga claims the win. Final score from Birmingham. Mox 63, Sanford 56. We celebrate you, loyal UTC fans, who brave sunburn and parking game after game. You super fans who live, eat, and breathe your UTC sports. And you, family of fanatics, passing down your game day traditions. No matter who you are, Mighty Mox, FSG has you covered. Get the exclusive Power C debit card and show your UTC pride. Together, we'll ride the rails to victory. FSG Bank is proud to be the official bank of UTC Athletics. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. First of all, blocking shots is a gift. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a skill you can teach. Uh, it's a lot of timing. Blocking shots has been my thing since I was a kid, and uh, it helps during the game. I know what a player likes to do. I know his move. He's got terrific timing for when guys come down the lane to, to avoid fouling and really affect shots. His size, his athleticism, his length, uh, he can change the game in so many different ways, and uh, there's not too many big guys uh, like him in our league. Everybody play different. You know, some teams, they like to drive in the lane a lot. Some teams don't come in at all. It'd be some games I go with zero blocks, and that's okay, though, as long as the team come out with a win and everything. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously it's a way to bring energy. Um, it can get our guys energized when he blocks a shot, just like when he can have a great post move late in the game and finish it in and around the basket or have a big dunk. I mean, I love dunking the ball, don't get me wrong, but I'd say a block is my most favorite thing to do. Because when you're blocking, you're stopping the points. Of course, there's not two points on the board. And it feels good to send the, block, send the ball back to the person that shot the ball. I like winning more. So if, if, if he can impact the game on defense, if that's what he needs for that game, and we have success and win the game, uh, that's what we want. And if we need to roll the ball into him 20 times in a game and let him make post moves and dunk in around the basket, if it gets us a win, that's what we want. So. It's time for the Student Athlete Spotlight, brought to you by Southeast Bank. Um, it was actually Coach Bob. He uh, was recruiting me and he took me down here on a visit. I just really loved it. Like, I loved the area downtown. I loved everything. All the people were nice. I think it was just a great community. I think it's actually pretty similar. I mean, a lot of people still do a lot of stuff outdoors. And Richmond is kind of like right on the James, too. So there's a river close by, which, I mean, there are like some similarities. Yeah, I really like going hiking and stuff. I went kayaking like one time here, which I thought was really fun. I used to do, uh, there's like Pony Pasture, a place like that out in Richmond. A, lot, a bunch of people like go down to the river and stuff like that. I usually stick to the canoes. I say kayak, but yeah, like I can't fit in the stem noses. Uh, for here, I actually went up to Lookout Mountain and I went to Sunset Rock the other weekend, but that's about it. I haven't done too much hiking. I heard Blue Hole was a pretty cool place to go. And I went to uh, some place called like Stinger's Ridge, I think but uh, nothing really that much in Chattanooga. In Virginia, I went to like the Appalachian Trail up in like Charlottesville, and that's about it. Uh, I think probably like uh, kind of complimenting with the other bigs like Toyo and some of the other guys like Duke and Chuck, and maybe even Rich some too, and everyone like that. But I think probably like playing like the trail spot, and like playing mainly like a stretch four kind of guy. Yeah, it's kind of like overall. I mean, some of the guys I'm a little closer with, like the freshmen, just 
kind of happens that way, I think. And my roommates like Toyo, Casey, and Chuck, they're all a lot of good guys. But I mean, everyone's really cool. I like everyone a lot. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by FSG Bank. Proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics. Ray McLean on the perimeter. Bounce pass into Chuck Hester. Free throw line. Takes a dribble and puts up the jumper. And the Mox on the board. That makes it 11-6. UTC trails by five. Bulldogs with the possession. He robs three from the short corner. Rattles on through. Eric Robertson, three-pointer. And that makes it 11-9. Go against Toyo. Return pass. Three-pointer. Off no good. Weak side. D. Oldham with a rebound. Mox with numbers if they hurry. Prior to McLean. McLean all the way for the jam. Split the defense. No one cut him off. He went right. Mets Dowie tries to get around. Free on the floor. It's stripped away by D. Oldham. Oldham with the strip. Almost lost it. Three on one. Into McLean who lays it up in air. Oldham out in front. Return pass Prior. Prior back to Oldham. Open look. Three pointer. D. Oldham's three. Rattles off. No good. At three. Three bound. Back up. And gently places it in. So Prior. Picks up the dribble, needs some help. McLean in the circle, one-hander, won't, yeah, it will. Friendly roll for Trey McLean, and McLean's got eight. Now in the game, three-pointer, rims out no good. There's Trey McLean again with a rebound. Outlet pass to Greg Pryor. Pryor brings it down the floor, stops, fires three-pointer by Pryor is good. First field goal in a game and a half for Greg Pryor, and he makes it 29-22. Chattanooga by seven. 32 to play. Almost stolen away with the steal. Outlet pass Pryor. Pryor by himself and he lays it up and it in. It did a full. Trey McLean out in front. D. Oldham had a notion. Passed up the three. Drives, jumps, shot. Pryor, or I should say McLean. Three to McLean. Kicks near side. Three pointer off no good. Rebound tapped and Greg Pryor comes up with the ball. Pryor down the floor for Chittanooga. Free throw line, drives inside, layup up and in. Greg Pryor by the Bulldogs. Mox might need a timeout. Instead, he gets it in to Eric Robertson. Robertson on the dribble right in front of the Bulldog bench. Gets it across the timeline. e -Rob back to Pryor. Pryor drives into lane, goes all the way. Underhand flip to Toyo, who lays it up and in. 56-33, 23-point lead. 18-25 left to steal. Here's Trey McClain. Bam! Fouls on Marshall, his second. Box inbound to Peyton Woods. They just want Woods to be more aggressive. Backdoor cut and a slam inside by Duke Etheridge. Six driving inside, stopping. Back on the perimeter it goes. Stolen away, D. Oldham. Three chasing him. Oldham down the floor, goes up and lays it up and in and gets the whistle. Like I said, everyone getting happy in this second half. Like Connor Schrader, his second three-pointer of the night, 68-45. That's one way to get back into it. Box down the floor, Oldham all the way, layup drill, lays it up and in. Maybe Logs are going to make the Mox work if nothing else. JBC all the way, layup good, and he's fouled. Jonathan Burroughs Cook, his first field goal of the game, had a couple of free throws in the first half. And in. Nicely done, underneath the hoop. Koopman gets two more, 78 to 51. Down the floor, layup drill, Etheridge lays it up and in. And the double team out of almost every possession. Fade away jumper by McLean, no good. Etheridge had the rebound, lost it, gets it back, throws it up, and scores, and gets another win. 55, 90 55, 35 point. Ted Nugget lead. Oldham to Pete Woods. Woods drives in the lane, layup, good. Pete Woods going to the raise the winner rim. Chuck Esther with the rebound. Back the other way for Chattanooga. Near side Woods into D. Oldham. Behind the back into Toyo. Back to Pete Woods. His three pointer, good. Teams that have 19 victories. Baden Woods near side for Chattanooga into Jackson White. White goes up and jams it. Jackson White, the freshman, will toss it in. Saquon Matthews, Baden Woods out in front, open look three pointer, that's perfect. Out in front, White tries the three, short arms it no good. Stolen away by D. Oldham. Oldham in the open floor, bounce pass to Alex Brand, who lays it up and in. 
Alex Brand for two. Throws it back on foot. Matthews, three again. Off the glass, no good. Rebound inside. Kalina puts it up, no good. Rebound on the floor. Jackson White gets it, throws it inside. Matthews lays it up and in. 125-85. UTC with a victory. Box win it by 40 for their 19th win of the year. We celebrate you, loyal UTC fans, who brave sunburn and parking game after game. You super fans who live, eat, and breathe your UTC sports. And you, family of fanatics, passing down your game day traditions. No matter who you are, Mighty Mox, FSG has you covered. Get the exclusive Power C debit card and show your UTC pride. Together, we'll ride the rails to victory. FSG Bank is proud to be the official bank of UTC athletics. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Basketball. I'm Jim Reynolds, along with Mox Head Basketball Coach Matt McCall. Start out and say uh, you go on the road and, and beat a pretty good Sanford team. Let's say two different games Saturday to Monday. We'll start with Saturday, where we went slow and then got speeded up by Monday. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I think that obviously on, on Saturday uh, we struggled to put the ball in the basket. I thought we got really, really good looks. Um, they just weren't going down. And, um, you know, Sanford and Citadel do play a similar style as far as pressing goes. But, you know, it just seemed like there was a little bit of a lid on the basket and really had to win that game uh, strictly on our defense and our rebounding. And we did that. And um, difficult place to play. Um, we know when we go on the road, we're going to get team's best shots because of the things that we've been able to do up to this point in time. And thought Sanford played a terrific game. And, and our, our guys found a way to win the game coming out in the end. And then, you know, turn around on a quick turnaround and play Citadel. Uh, and we're able to score a lot of points in that game. A majority of them came from the free throw line, but uh, it was a great game, a fun environment in here as well. Going back to the Sanford game, like you said, it didn't come easy. It wasn't just throw up a shot, it goes in. You had the scrap. That old defense travels and rebounding travels and those kind of things travel, don't they? Well, I think a lot of times, especially on the road, there's going to be nights where the ball is not going in the basket, and really good teams find a way to win games uh, when you're not scoring. And, uh, you know, I think that was probably one of our first games that, you know, we scored in the 50s and found a way to win the game. And, and that's going to be important for us going forward here. Uh, you know, we got a brutal stretch coming up as far as playing a lot of games in a short amount of times. And at the end of the day, you're trying to win three games in three days. And some of those games, you, the ball may not be going in. So can we win a game strictly with our defense and rebounding? And I think we proved that on Saturday night, and I think that's going to help us going forward. Is that kind of a lesson learned in Greenville against Furman earlier this year? I think uh, no question. I think no question about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of times a lot of teams out there allow their offense to affect them on the defensive end of the floor. And we didn't do that on Saturday night, and that's something we need to learn and grow and continue to get better as we move forward here. Then the Citadel game, a uh, little bit up and down, wasn't it? You know, that's the way they play. And um, they came out to start the game. They weren't pressing, uh, which kind of took us by surprise a little bit. And then they went to their press, and we were able to break their press. And, you know, I, I felt like when we played them at their place, we panicked a little bit. And at no point in the game last night did we panic. We stuck to the script. We did our job. And it was a business-like win. And, you know, obviously we were able to score a lot of points. At the end of the first half, I think that eight-minute mark kind of from there on, open up a 15-point lead at halftime, then go on a run at the start of the second half and give yourself a, a pretty good cushion in there. Well, it started with our stops. When we were able to get stops, we were able to get out on the break and finish some plays on the break, which got us going. It got our energy going, um, and that carryover – yeah, there was some carryover going into the second half. Um, but it started with our defense and rebounding. That allowed us to get out on the break. Sometimes they gamble in the backcourt for steals and trap, even on misses. And when they did that, we were able to handle it and get some easy baskets. I know we all look at stat sheets, primarily me, points and rebounds. But someone like Trey McLean, what he does to disrupt people defensively, someone's got to take note of that somewhere. He impacts the game in so many different ways. And um, I've really seen him put a focus, especially on rebounding the basketball, ever since Casey Jones went down. It's almost like he wanted to step into that role because Casey was such a good rebounder for us. And, you know, since that game, uh, he's done a terrific job on the backboard. But like you're saying, he impacts the game in so many different ways. He's got great length, great size. We can put him on small 
smaller guards. He's great at moving his feet, and his length causes teams a lot of problems, especially on the defensive end of the floor. These next three games, you have a game against Wofford. Obviously, we know what they've done for championships over the last six years. Then Furman, the only team that tagged you with a conference loss. And I think one of the better teams in the league, Monday at Mercer. That's a pretty tough three-game stretch. Regardless of just three games in a short period of time, three games against quality opponents. Three games against you know three of the better teams in our league, in the top half of our league. And you can throw a fourth game in there the following Saturday at ETSU. Then you got Western Carolina mixed in there, which is always a difficult place to play as well. So um, it's a one-game season right now. We'll continue to approach it that way. And all that matters here is, is Wofford on Thursday. Uh, I don't think we've beaten them here in this building in a long time. So uh, we need a great crowd on hand, and our guys need to be locked in and focused on, on what we got to do to win the game. Last question. When you have depth like you have, the schedule, I'm not going to say it's easier, but it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Well, I think last night was obviously beneficial being able to play our, pretty much our whole team. Uh, no one logged a lot of minutes, so there shouldn't be excuses on why we can't have a great practice uh, today and tomorrow and, and get prepared uh, for, for a great team on Thursday, which is a completely different style than we played yesterday and played on Saturday. They're going to want to slow the game down. We're going to see a lot of screening action in the half court. Got to guard the three-point line. Got to do a great job on the glass. So completely different style, so we need to take these two days to get really prepared. UTC women's basketball team with games against Furman and Wofford. We'll have highlights of those games next time on Inside Chattanooga Basketball. Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. By Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. By FSG Bank, proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics.